بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Okay, so here's something you and I differ on, and I I, I, res I respectfully disagree with you on it. But I'm I'm interested. I disagree with you as well. <laughs> I'm interested to hear and and even potentially like I actually change my mind often yeah, yeah, yeah. from podcasts. If other hosts, if other guests like listen to me afterwards, they'd be like, they, he just said what I told him. He was telling me no when I was saying it. So I've heard you say before that you actually promote and would like more Muslims to to enter the military. Yep. So here's my take on it. Why why should a Muslim or anyone join a, an industrial complex that benefits off of money and interests and, and power? I don't want to lose my people's lives in order to obtain something that I find to be morally correct and in, in intention of the superiors and leaders of those of the military industrial complex. So do you just hold that opinion for the U.S. military or for any military? The U.S. military is the only relevant one, right? I mean, other than Russia, maybe. But I would, any, I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to join a military that's government is corrupt. What government is corrupt? I get okay, but there are governments that to fight in defense or to fight for a good cause is better than to be in the mercy of a government that you have to fight, especially if you're in the military, mm -hmm. no matter where they send you. So what if the military tells me to go attack an innocent group of people because they want to obtain the oil or, or the land or cause a proxy war in Yemen and so on? So is there any military that fights for a good cause? Of course. I, I think, you know, war sometimes is necessary. I'm not one of those people that's anti-war. Mm -hmm. So I'll start off by saying that if you, and not just you, but the general you, right? If you only hold that view towards the U.S. military, then I think that's hypocritical. Because like I said, personally, there's, there's not an absolute military, number one, that follows Islamic law. There's no military that has ever done a war that we could sit here and be like, oh, I'm proud of that. Like, there's not a single one, you know. I, I would actually say I'm proud of the U.S. for World War II and World War One. There are wars where the U.S. was the morally correct one. Well, I won't well, get my and, opinion and I, on I, that, but <laughs> and, and I don't even think it's a Muslim, like I don't even think it's a Muslim thing because actually the reason my dad agrees with you and not me is is he's saying, well, then how is it then that you're gonna say that, but at the same time say that, oh yeah, Muslims are American and Muslims are pro-America if you're right. saying they can't join the military. Right. I actually just think for anyone, they shouldn't join today's modern day U.S. makeup of a military. I think the U.S. through history was actually other than a couple. Right, right, right. So, okay. I mean, I feel like we can break this down into many things, right? So I hear that a lot because of Islam. Like, I, uh, what I always get is you shouldn't be Muslim and join the U.S. military. Like, those specific things, right? You're telling me that is just in general. So that's kind of different, right? But Actually, so, address that, too. Let's, let's address that okay, first. Okay, so for example, right, like... Let's say we have a governor here and they happen to be the first governor of Maryland. I don't know, you know, wherever. And I always see us as Muslims and as, a, as an ummah get so excited about that. Why is that? If we really think about it is because we know that in order for laws to change, we need those governors, those mayors, right? Because as a Muslim governor or mayor, you're still going to have your Islamic values, right? I'm not saying you're going to impose Islam into everybody, right? Because that's not what we're here to do as U.S. governors and U.S. politicians. You're not here to impose your religion on people. However, we know where your morals and your values are as a Muslim governor or as a Muslim mayor, right? So why is it that we cheer so much when we see Muslim mayors, Muslim governors? Like, because we know the positive impact that that has, right? Now, when it comes to the military, if we're not there, what change is going to happen for us? Where are those Islamic values going to be? I know I hear a lot of people complain about, you know, oh, well, the, the U.S. military, quote unquote, hates Muslims, right? Like they're attacking Muslim majority countries and they hate Muslims. So if that organization hates Muslims, why would they change anything for you if you're not in there? Who's going to speak up for you? A non-Muslim is not going to speak up for you, for your rights, for your beliefs, for your respect when we're in other countries that have a lot of Muslims in them. Nobody's going to speak up for you. People are still going to continue to do them because there's nobody holding them accountable. So when I'm in there and I'm only one, right, but there's many of us, like there's, there's a lot of Muslims in the military and we've been here since the First World War. When we're there, we can not only ensure the proper treatment of our soldiers, our our service members, but we can also ensure fair and, and 
proper treatment of civilians when we're overseas, right? So we can't expect an organization that that we say hates us to change for us just because. Like, that's not, like, let's utilize our common sense. That's not going to happen. Why would they do that? Now, let's say I stay in, right, as a Muslim, and I make it through the ranks, and I and I become somebody really important in the military, like, now you know that I have Islamic values. I might not be imposing my religion because that's not my that's not my job to do either as a as a service member. It's nobody's job to impose your religion on anyone. But at that point, you know that I have Islamic values, right? So wouldn't you trust me more as a military leader be, just for the simple fact that you know that I have Islamic values versus a non-Muslim leader? Mm-hmm. You know, so if we're not there, we can't cause that change. And if you just think about it in a very like mature perspective, right? The military is not going anywhere. No military for any country is going to disappear. That's never going to happen. So to sit here and say, well, yeah, don't be, don't be in the military. Don't be in the military. Well, somebody's going to be in it, whether it's me or somebody from Wisconsin, one of us is going to join. And it's just going to happen. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. So instead of sitting here and saying, okay, well, we should just not be part of that organization, we need to be. Because that's the only way that you cause change. And how do you think you can make a difference, a change within the military as a Muslim? I'm not sitting here saying that I'm going to change the entirety of a military, right? Like, that's also, sure, it would be great. Of course it would. But I'm not. I think that we can all cause our own little change. And that to me is enough, right? So if I'm overseas and I see somebody mistreating a Muslim or doing like, for example, a man touching a, a Muslim woman, I know that that's not right. And that can create huge conflict. I'm talking like country versus country type of conflict, right? Because now you completely disrespected their entire religion in their own country. So even things like that have a big impact. So when you have somebody that's Muslim and a Muslim woman and a visibly Muslim woman being that middleman, you can mitigate a lot of conflict. Like you can prevent a lot of conflict when when you do things like that. Or even I've had anti-terrorism trainings because we have to do that every year where I've had to step in and I speak up, like I speak up for everybody and I, you best believe I'm going to speak up for me. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) But so I've had anti-terrorism training turned very anti-Islamic and I put a stop to that. And I've spoken up and said, hey, like we need to revisit these slides because they, they, they're becoming very anti-Islamic and we owe it to our Muslim soldiers because it's not just me. Yes, I might speak up, but there's privates or, you know, people of lower rank than me that are scared of speaking up and that they're going to see this. And now they are going to feel like a target within this organization that they, too, are also part of that. They, too, are also giving up the same things that everybody else is giving up. So we owe it to our Muslim soldiers to not make anti-terrorism training into an anti-Islamic training. So if I don't speak up and they continue to perpetuate this anti-terrorism equals anti-Islamic, you know, Narrative. A- narrative how are we going to fix it mm. so and like i said who's going to hold who accountable so if i'm not there how do i know that they were ever going to say anything how do i know that those lights were ever going to get fixed and you know that might be little to people but that makes a huge impact and and like i always say it, if my being there saves one life isn't that good enough for all of us as a numa like isn't one life good enough mm. So what would you say to, you, you gave the example of a governor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the governor is someone in power who can implement change in policies and, and, and have influence. But what about as, as a soldier? Like you said, like soldiers don't necessarily speak up. They're, they're more in con- controlled, at least from someone who doesn't know much about the military. I would say that they don't necessarily speak up. I'm saying that they might be scared of speaking up, right? Like I speak up. I have no problem. And not, not only do I speak up, but... I also empower my soldiers to speak up, whether they're Muslim or not, right? Do you think there's a lot of Muslim soldiers in the military, uh, in the U.S. military, that think like you, that 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 are trying to make change that's not, you know, change where it's like, oh, yeah, let's let's convert all these yeah, guys to right, Islam, right. but it's like, <laughs> let's stop the bad narratives. And, yes. and if someone, if you're fighting or if someone you're, you're sh- to- told is an enemy, mm-hmm. y- you might start growing hate in your heart. But mm-hmm. when you see your comrade be from the same people, that that may soften your heart to, to those very A- people. Absolutely. And you said it right there. Even just our existence alone, right? People see me and I'm a leader in my organization, right? So obviously. What, what rank are you in the military? I'm a staff sergeant. Okay. So, and in my unit, I'm a detachment sergeant. So we have the commander and then we have me. Like, 
that's the order of rank. And then we have our soldiers, right? So I'm somebody in that unit, right? So when people just see you existing in there, like you said, you soften their hearts because they had a completely different idea of what Islam was, you know? And now they're seeing not only a peer, but they're seeing a superior who is that religion, who is who they see that fights for them, fights for 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 their equal treatment, Muslim or not, because I'm here for all of my soldiers, whether or not they're Muslim. And I'm here for all of their rights, whether or not they're Muslim. So when they see that me as a Muslim leader is really supporting them for who they are, for what their rights are, and to make sure that everybody's being treated equally, they're going to associate that too with my religion, right? The same way that they associate, like we, we've said it, right? Anytime something happens and it's a Muslim, they make sure that they put a Muslim in front of it, right? So anything, anytime that I do something positive, I make sure I put Muslim in front of it. And when people are like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. It sure does. Because the media reminds us every day when a Muslim does something wrong. So I'm going to remind you every day when I do something right. And you are all going to associate Islam to a leader and, and someone who's proud to be in the military, you know? And have you gotten backlash or anything from comrades and stuff for being Muslim or gotten accused of anything that they may think? Yes and no. I think my soldiers, I've, I've been lucky to, all of my soldiers love and respect me. It's been more so with superiors who are just not used to seeing women in, in leadership positions or Muslim women at that and then Mexican women at that. You know, you you kind of start hitting every single one of their their sensitive spots, <laughs> uh, you know, so that's what I'm here to do. If I'm going to be uncomfortable, we're all going to be uncomfortable here. Like <laughs> somebody's going to give up and it's not going to be me. So I personally, like I said, I've gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot of hardships, but I feel like that made me stronger. And I'm not the only person. And I have a whole community right next to me that helps me and that helps every soldier that that asks for help you know you asked about higher ranking officials like we have a whole full birth colonel I don't know if you're familiar with the military structure but that's a very high rank a very high rank and he's an imam in in the in the army very amazing man colonel shabas a shout out to him I'd like to have him on the podcast. Uh, he and I, he would love to be here. He he would love to be here. I know that he makes a lot of, he makes a difference. You know, the fact that he's an imam in the military, just like, let's think about that. And he services everyone. Like he's not just here for the Muslim soldiers, right? Like he's here for everybody. He's like a chaplain. Yes, he's a chaplain, right? But his denomination is obviously Islam. So even just his presence alone shocks people and and by people, I mean the people in the military. And that's what that's what we need. We need to just see Muslims as normal people. Like, I just want us to be in the movies in the background drinking coffee. Because that's literally what we do every single day of our lives. Like, we don't have to be, like I said, those, woe is me. I want to take my hijab off. You know, I'm being oppressed by every. Like, we're not that. You know, I'm in the military. You do podcasts. Like, we, we're literally just regular schmegular people. <laughs> you mm. know, like... And that's all that I want others to see. Because when they see that, they're like, oh, well, she's normal. Well, she's just like us. Interesting. You did convince me. I'm, I'm the I, 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 that's actually a very nice take on it. Because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're building bridges in a place that is unfamiliar or unknown or taboo yes. to build bridges in. Yes. And I think, you know, my friend said this to me the other day, and it really resonated with me in my heart, that the power of the prophet, peace be upon him, his, his biggest strength was reacting and acting in a way that no one ever expected people would hurt him people would do so and so and they're like all right let's see we got him now yeah we got him, now. <laughs> we got him. and he would react in a way that's not expected mm -hmm. and so the same thing your presence in the military by itself is unexpected mm -hmm. by muslims by non-muslims by superiors and so on so even just your existence right now is is actually following in the way of the prophet mm -hmm. peace be upon him and building yeah. bridges and very you know, removing barriers and stuff yeah. like that. And be before we move on, I know you mentioned about, you know, what if they tell me to to kill an innocent person? Or you said something like that. Yeah, what what if they... Um. So yeah. that's one of the things that I always tell people. So there, I, I, I've noticed a, a similarity between people who hate Muslims and Muslims who hate the military and it's ignorance. That, like, the similarities are just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would never happen. That would never, like... So there's rules of engagement in the military. And 
believe it or not, they align with the rules of engagement of our prophet, peace be upon him, when he went into battle. So you don't kill animals, you don't kill women and children, you don't attack places of worship, things like that also apply to us. So I think that when people make comments like, oh, you know, you kill your innocent brothers and sisters, and they try to blame me for every death that has happened, you know, like I said in the beginning, the military is made up of individuals. So I'm not here to say, oh, there's not a single military person that has done anything wrong. Of course they have. And I and I feel that they deserve punishment. And we also need to look into that. You know, when, when we're looking at specific cases in the military, have we researched if they were put in prison? Because those are war crimes. Crimes. Like, keyword is a crime. Because it's also not allowed in the military. So they also need to be, they need to go through through the justice system of the military. So, yes, bad things happen. Yes, there are bad soldiers. Yes, there are bad Marines. Yes, there, there are bad airmen, right? Of course there are. Just like there's bad Muslims, there's bad Mexicans. Like, there's bad people in every group, right? But that's not what the organization is. That's not what the religion is, right? That's just those people that chose to do something and now because they wear a uniform it's like oh every single soldier or everybody in the military and that's not the case so you're allowed to disobey illegal and immoral orders so if i was asked to kill a child i can say no because that is clearly a very illegal order and it's most definitely an immoral order so no that that shouldn't happen and I would most definitely say no, like absolutely not. And one thing people don't really realize is, you know, because it's a high population of the military, even though 40 percent of the military are minorities, the other 60 mm-hmm. percent are usually southern white Americans. Mm-hmm. And what many Muslims and non-Muslims alike need to understand is that, well, actually, I'm going to go with Muslims. There's a lot of commonality between us and Southern white Americans, the, the, the traditional aspect, the religious aspect, loving, you know, loving God, loving your family, loving thy neighbor. Mm-hmm. There, there's a lot between us and that, that we share with them than the differences. And, you know, I would put in a lot of investment and a lot of money into someone who goes out and invites people from Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama to a sim. Mm-hmm. 